The Gospel only names one disciple on the road to Emmaus, Cleopas. There's no reason then to assume, that, as artists and others invariably do, that the second disciple was another man. Perhaps the disciple was a woman, Cleopas's wife, for example. It would be suitable for the second disciple to be a woman because theirs is not a once upon a time in a land far away tale. It's about us, men and women who struggle to understand and believe in Christ. First notable thing about the disciples is that they're not paralyzed by the frustration of their hopes about Jesus. It's the third day since those events, but already they're on the road, getting on with their lives. That doesn't mean that they have forgotten Jesus or that they ignore reports that he's risen. As they walk along, they keep him in mind and in their talk. We too carry on our day-to-day -day lives. Sometimes we feel disappointed in our hopes. Sometimes we wonder about the value of our commitment to Christ. But we still get up in the morning and go through the day. We must, because just as the disciples met Jesus on the road, we too will meet him on the road. Our daily lives are the place where faith is explored, questioned, and ultimately confirmed. The disciples talk with each other about Jesus. When the stranger joined them, they continued to talk about him. They talked about scripture. They talked about what Jesus had said and done. That was not enough. Some Christians think it's sufficient to hand Bibles to people. The experience of the two disciples should be a caution for such believers. Information about Jesus, conversation about Jesus, theological statements about Jesus, or even the best explanations of Scripture will not bring people to faith. Something more is needed. So the disciples continue on the roads to Emmaus, still talking about Jesus, and through his explanation, coming to a deeper understanding of Scripture. But they still do not, cannot really believe. Faith does not depend upon information. The basis of faith is an encounter with Jesus Christ. Understanding the Scriptures and the teachings of the Church can and should help us toward that encounter, and we should continually grow in our understanding of them. But they cannot replace the encounter. Where does the encounter take place? Here we come to the core of Luke's message today and what the two disciples say about their experience. They told about how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. They had walked with him, but could not believe. They had talked with him, but could not believe. They had listened to him, but could not believe. But when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. From that Sunday to this, we followers of Jesus break bread and in that action know that the Lord is risen and is with us. The Eucharist proclaims the resurrection. When the disciples recognize the Lord and realize that the rumors of a vision of angels who said that he was alive are true, he vanished from their sight. Once they realized that the Lord had been with them all along, they no longer needed to see him with the eyes of flesh. The eyes of faith see better. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, where they told the others of their encounter. They became missioners, proclaiming the resurrection of the Lord. That is the only appropriate response to their encounter with Jesus. That too is our story. We share the Eucharist, and in that sacrament, we know that the Lord is with us on all our roads, at all our tables. Then we go to share that good news with all. A Christian's encounter with Jesus is always meant for the sake of others. The way we share that good news is the same way that Jesus shared it with those disciples. Just as he walked with them in their sorrow and confusion, we walk with our brothers and sisters in their sorrow and confusion. Just as he joined them in their meal, we join others in their everyday lives. Just as he shared with them the word of God and the bread of life, 
we offer them not only the fruits of our encounters with Jesus, but the opportunity to experience that encounter themselves.